الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد Last week I was talking about the verses from uh, Surah Al-Safat that dealt with the state of the disbelievers while they were pointing fingers at each other and quarreling and laying the blame on each other in hellfire. Today, and Allah Tabarqa Ta'ala, he, you know, when He gives us a, an image from hellfire, He follows it up with an image from, from heaven. So that's what I want to focus on today. So after verse 38, when Allah says, إِنَّكُمْ لَذَائِقُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ Talking about the disbelievers, you will taste the painful torment. Then he turns to the believers as they enjoy heaven. Allah says in the verses, uh, this is in Surah Safat, chapter 37, from verse 40 to 42. إِلَّا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ الْمُخْلَصِينَ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ رِزْقٌ مَعْلُومٌ فَوَاكِوهُ وَهُمْ مُكْرَمُونَ the ones who are saved from this torment are, you know, but not the chosen servants of Allah. They are saved from that. They will have a known provision, fruit of every type, and they will be honored. Now, no one will be admitted to heaven unless they have purified themselves and Allah chose them. You have to be a mukhlis and a mukhlas. Mukhlis is, you know, you purified yourself. And mukhlas is Allah which choose the pure ones. So those are the two qualities of believers that are admitted to, to, to heaven. They, they purify themselves, so Allah chose them and elevated them in honor. When a believer submits to Allah and purifies himself, then Allah will choose them and honor them. And self-purification requires knowledge and effort. You have to know what are the activities that Allah loves, that, that purifies the self. You have to follow Quran and Sunnah. And that, required, and that knowledge by itself will not help you if you don't implement it. So there is effort involved in purifying yourself, in, in telling the truth, in being good to the people around you. It takes effort. Allah says in heaven they have provision that is known. That means that provision is set. You don't have to worry about it. It's not going to decrease. It's ever increasing. Nobody's going to fight you over it. It's not like the provisions of this life. Whatever you want is there. And it's there forever. And it's all yours. Nobody can, can you know, fight you over it. So that's rizqum ma'loom. It never changes or get reduced. Fawakih wa mukramun. When when in the Quran there's a mention of fawakih, fruit, it's not for the fruit itself. You know the, the fruit when you when you have a dinner and you put all kinds of fruit, that's a sign of, of honor. That you are the hospitality, that you're taking care of of your, your visitors. By not just giving them a meal, but putting all of the accompaniments with it. So that's what fawakih means. And anything in heaven has nothing in common with what we know today, except by name. So when we say fruit, whatever you imagine fruit is, it's not that in, in, in heaven. It's much, much better. It's, it, we cannot comprehend how beautiful and how tasty and how great it is. So that's what fawakih. And wahu mukramun, it's it's a sign of honor and perfect hospitality from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Fi Jannati Naim ala Sururi Mutakabilin in verses 43 and 44. In the gardens of bliss facing each other on thrones. Now facing each other has the meanings of they're at the same level. There is no envy among them, there is no hatred. You know, it's like when, when you're sitting with your best friends in the best environment, on the most comfortable, you know, you're having a nice, you know, chat with your friends on a nice, cushy environment with maybe nice scenery and everything. That, that's, I mean, that level of, of happiness and comfort is what is meant by sururi mutaqabilin. They're all sitting with each other. They're all, nobody feels like they're better or less than the others. They all love each other. There is no more hatred. There is no more envy. The, you know, there is nothing that, 
you know, we have in this life that ruins a perfect setting. So they recline and chat like best friends do. They struggled in this life. You know, they, they put the effort to obey Allah ta'ala. They put the effort and, and it wasn't, wasn't easy. And now, now is the time that they sit and relax and they can have whatever they want. There is no more responsibility. There is no more fear, no more sickness. Nothing that ruins the enjoyment of, of that moment. And they have it till eternity for the, with no end. So this is, this is the honor that Allah has in store for the people who purify themselves, obey him in this life, and strive for that, for that position. Verse 50, فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ Then they will turn to one another inquisitively. They start asking each other, you know, chatting, asking each other, what did you do in this life to deserve this, this place in heaven? Or things about, you know, things that went in this life you know, they inquisit each other. What led them to, to this beautiful place in, in, in paradise? Verse 51 to 53. So one of them will say, I once had a companion in this world who used to ask me, Do you actually believe in resurrection? When are we dead and reduced to dust and bones? Will we really be brought to, ju to judgment? Now, we all have, we all know of somebody in this life, whether it's a coworker, a neighbor, a, you know, a family member, an acquaintance, contemporary in this life, that they don't believe. You know, here you are, you're, you're depriving yourself from a lot of the pleasures in this world because Allah says don't. And they don't care. They're going and doing whatever they want. And they mock the believers. Oh, you can't deal with usury. You can't drink. You can't, you know, go party. You can't do this. You can't do that. This is what, you know, acquaintances that don't believe do. They, they try to mock and make fun of, of a believer's core values. Are you crazy? You're lending your money without usury? And the person takes years to pay it back. Are you crazy? I mean, that, that's, that's the type of mocking that you can expect from this qareen, from this contemporary in this life. So they mock faith. They mock that there is life after death, that once you die and decompose and now you're, you're dust, you're going to come back to life. You know, it's, it's like they don't believe. They, you know, they believe that you live this life, you take from it whatever you can, and then once death comes, that's the end of things. That, that's the, that's, what, they, that's the, what they believe in. They only see this life. They see that might makes right. I'm strong, I'm powerful, I'm, I'm rich, I'm going to take advantage of everybody else. And that's my right. Because they don't fear Allah, they don't, you know, they, they don't, they don't have anything to, you know, to go with. So money and power are everything, and death comes and then it ends everything. That's why when you look at their behavior, they're, they're striving to get as much of it in this life, not knowing that they're going to be responsible for how they're, you know, how they're acquiring it and what are they spending it on. But, you know, ignorance is, is bliss in their case, but they will know the truth at some point. So they look at, you know, these companions, they look at faith as weakness, that, you know, Nobody ever came back from death and told us there's a hereafter. What, are you kidding me? You know, they make fun. They mock the believers. So this believer in, in, in heaven that was chatting with his friends, he will then ask, would you care to see his fate? Would you care to see him? Then they will look and spot him in the middle of hellfire. This qareen. The laws of heaven are nothing like the laws of this world. You want something, it's right in front of you. You want to talk to somebody, you'll see, him, he, you'll see him right in front of you, you talk to him. There is no more effort. There is no more getting into a car, going half an hour to visit your friend and see how he's doing. You know, he's right there. If, whenever you want, you get in, in heaven. It's, it's a different thing. So... Do you want to see the fate of this person that, that was mocking me in this life? 
and they look and they see him being punished in the middle of hellfire. Then he addresses, addresses him. He will then say, by Allah, you nearly ruined me. Had I listened to you and followed you, you would have ruined me. I would have been right there in hellfire being tormented along with you. But a believer stand, you know, sticks to his values and, and suffers in this life because the reward is waiting. Versus people that reward themselves in this life and in the hereafter they got nothing. They got nothing but eternal punishment. So seeing the fate of the disbelievers in, in hellfire increases the happiness of believers. Not, not, you know, the word in Arabic is shamata. You know, it's like you're, you're not, not to kind of degrade them, but you're happy that you didn't, you didn't end up with them. The example of this happiness is like having two partners. Business partners. Maybe one wanted to deal with expired, let's say expired foods, which is illegal. They want to change the, the food and, and do something. There's a lot of money in it because companies would have thrown that stuff away. We're going to change the dates and sell it. And the, his partners say, no, I fear Allah, I will not do that. And they break their partnership and you know everybody goes their own way. So when that person gets caught and gets thrown in jail, that person that you know, believed in Allah and did not do that, he's going to be very happy that he, you know, he would have been there with him. That's the happiness when you see the fate of the disbelievers in hellfire. It increases in the happiness that, yes, we took the right decision in this life. Yes, we suffered, but it was worth it. Because Allah told us, you know, this is the path that you're going to take, and we did, and now we, we enjoy it. So that's the happiness. So what is needed in this life is a strong will. You have to be able to resist the mocking of disbelievers, whether it's in, you know, it comes at you like, a, you know, like drinking from a fire hose. It comes at you from social media. It comes at you from public schools. It comes at you from all directions, from TV, from, I mean, it is like, it's a wave after wave of mocking believers, mocking their values, and what's wrong with you? You know, live for this life. So what's needed is a strong will to resist all of these temptations and stick to what Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how, how told us how to behave in this life. Yes, it may look like, you know, like they're mocking you, but we'll see who mocks who in the end. The, you know, the one who laughs first is not the, not the winner. The one who laughs last is the winner. So now comes, now comes the turn of the believer to mock this disbeliever. So he will address him. Can you imagine that we will never die except our first death, nor be punished? Is that what you used to say? You know that you're not gonna die, you're gonna die and you're not gonna come back and there is no punishment, there's no heaven, no hell. Well, here you are. Now, you know, now the happiness of the believer, you know, that resisted all this mocking in this in this life and stuck to the you know stuck to their guns. And Allah says in verse sixty, "Inna hada lahu al fawzul azim, limithli hada faliyamal al amilun." This is truly the ultimate triumph. For, su for such honor, all should strive. Now, people congratulate each other, you know, when, when somebody gets married or, or buys a house or buys, you know, buy a car or gets, a, you know, gets employed, gets a nice job or a good business. They congratulate each other. But the true congratulation, the true triumph is when we set foot in heaven. The true triumph is when the true believer who sticks to his guns in this life and is steadfast on Allah's orders, does not waver, does not follow temptations, keeps his desires in check in the channels that Allah, Allah ordered. The triumph is to do good deeds for the sake of Allah. That's the triumph in this life. The triumph is to have Allah pleased with you and bless you and bless your family and bless whatever you do. The ultimate triumph is to enter heaven and be saved from hellfire. Triumph is not success in this life in the material sense. 
Those are things that we may have to do in this life to support, but we have to employ them to support our hereafter. For such honor, we want that honor. You want that honor in paradise where you sit with your brothers, you know, with, you know in, in the best environment, having the best food, having whatever you want with no limits. That's the honor that we should be striving for in this life. And achieving this honor requires effort. Nothing of value ever comes easy. Nobody's going to hand it to you. You have to work for it. Seeking knowledge is one way to do it because you have to know what Allah wants from you. You have to read the Quran, you have to understand it, and you have to implement it because that's how Allah told you, you want to be successful, I'm going to give you the recipe for success. It's in the Quran. And if you don't know how to read it, you don't, know, you don't understand what's in it, you may not know Arabic, but you can still read the translation and, and the explanation and benefit from it. But you have to implement it. It's not a matter of knowledge. You can accumulate a lot of knowledge, but if you don't implement it, it's worthless. That knowledge has, the, the important knowledge is the one that gets put in practice. So learn a little bit and practice better than learning a lot and no practice. So that's one. And studying the sunnah and implementing it is another way to achieve this honor because our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he showed us the way. He showed us by example how to live this Qur'an. His life was the Qur'an. He was described as the walking Qur'an. His, his manners, his, his behavior, his speech, his, you know, his lack, you know, his no speech, all of his behavior explained the Qur'an. So we have a role model to follow. And doing good deeds that benefit others in this life, again, for the sake of Allah, like building schools, building masajid, orphanages, hospitals, you know, don't, don't just focus on masajid. Anything that benefits the, the humans, you know, fellow, you know, fellow citizens is, is included in these good deeds because you do it for the sake of Allah. When you go to a, hus a hospital, is, is no less important than a masjid. A masjid is, is, is curing your, your soul, but you need a hospital that's going to cure your body as well. So all of these good deeds, do as many good deeds in as many venues as you can to achieve, to achieve that honor. So these are the deeds that accompany the believer into the grave and into the hereafter. Everything else other than that, you leave it behind. The car, you leave it behind. The house, you leave it behind. Your bank account goes to your inheritors. You don't take it with you. All you take with you is the good deeds that you do for the sake of Allah to benefit the community, to benefit others, and to benefit yourselves. Prime and, you know, you, prime, you, you purify yourself from, from the greed of having all that wealth, you know, not accumulating it, but benefiting from it. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لكم فاستغفرونه وغفور رحيم